the horror hour. All right. Well, hello and welcome to the Horror Hour, a place we discuss, we debate, we disagree on all things horror. I'm one of the co-hosts, Yutaka, and today I'm really excited uh, because I've got Mark Meyer, um, the director of The Summoned, and Angela Gullner, uh, one of the stars of The Summoned, um, to talk about their film that I actually got to see at Overlook. So how are both of you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. No, I appreciate it. Look, I had a blast with your um, film, and the audience did too. Like, the jokes were hitting... And, um, well, one, I know um, Salvador is not here, but I'm just going to say Joe was a dick. And I, <laughs> and I enjoyed everything about that. Good, um, good. So first off, I just want to ask Angela, what was it like to play this role? Oh, it was the most fun. It was, it was really great. I've known Yuri, the screenwriter, for a really long time. And we write together and collaborate a lot. So um, I felt like he really wrote, uh, he really wrote for me to have just the maximum amount of fun possible. And Mark, what was it like then um, also directing uh, this film, but also the location and how you were able to pull off some of the shots just with the exterior in that gorgeous house? You know, what's uh, the irony of this is that I could uh, make a horror movie about making this movie. Um, we actually shot in February of 2021 in, in Texas, uh, right on the Red River. Ooh. And Texas experienced one of the worst winter storms in a century. And it hit five days into shooting. So we lost all power. We were, you know, cooking you know, pizzas from a generator to a, like a microwave oven oh, no. just so we could feed people. So it's so interesting to be like in that situation where we're like, uh, thank goodness we had done so much work in pre-production and really worked our tails off so that when these things did happen, we were able to adapt. And, you know, if you're going to be trapped anywhere in that storm, it's not a bad place to be trapped because we were mostly all of us were living in that house that we were shooting in. And so that's where we were. We were all snowed into for a couple oh, wow. days. Yeah, we had it a lot better than there, uh, uh, several other Texans that I knew. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, I'm used to snow. I mean, I, I do remember that in Texas and that was, ooh. but I mean, in the yeah. Midwest, we, we get a, a fair amount. Uh, Texas just doesn't have the infrastructure to deal with it. They don't have the, the, the trucks to salt the roads or anything <laughs> like that. So, yeah, yeah. it was an adventure. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Wait, uh, then I've got to know too, then how was it filming those outdoor scenes in that weather? Oh, well, Angela could tell you a story or two about that. She's got a, a, a scene in a hot tub that occurred, yes, later. that occurred after the storm. So inside the hot tub was scalding and outside was freezing. And it was just a really confusing physical experience. <laughs> um, well, behind the scenes on that too, uh, because of the, that scene, we, we shot it later in the shoot. Mm -hmm. And so there was about a week's period of time that I was waking up at uh, periodically throughout the night and in the morning and like essentially uh, breaking up the ice that had formed in the hot tub so oh. that we would still be able to shoot the scene in a week and a half. <laughs> so. Yeah. We, we didn't shoot much in the worst of the snow because mm -hmm. it was so rough and so cold. And also we had established our exteriors as being like the dry, crunchy grass and not snow. But what happens to snow when it heats up is that it turns into mud. And mm -hmm. so we had a lot of time uh, in the morning just chiseling mud off the sea stands and get it so that we could bring the gear back in sight to shoot interiors after we had done exteriors and they were just like caked with mud. So it was a, it was a lot. <laughs> 
<gasps> oh my god well i mean at least it sounds like you guys had an adventure then you know? absolutely yeah. absolutely yes <laughs> I mean, and the product turned out fun because uh, another thing that I really enjoyed is, um, oh, I think, um, Angela, it was just your character's introduction um, that she's vlogging the entire time. Um, But I loved the personality. And I'm just curious, did you improvise any of that? Maybe a little bit. Um... Yeah, I can't remember. Angela does a great job just internalizing the character. So I think it, no matter what she says, we're like, I feel like that was in the script. I don't know. <laughs> I, I just like uh, that was the character. So we'd be like, we got it. Let's move on. We had to shoot without giving away some spoilers. We had to shoot some of the stuff in the back half of the script um, when we're in the woods really, really fast. So we just had two cameras and they were like, Angela, go just run around and do crazy stuff for (laughs) 20 minutes, go. And so we just like ran around and I said stuff and yeah. (laughs) It's, uh, you'll know it when you see it. I I love that scene. (laughs) Oh, it's it's exactly the scene and you're, it's like my favorite scene. And Yuri did write the lines that we're thinking of, the really funny lines. It was was interesting, you know, when the audience does see it and talking to Yuri, he, as he was going through different drafts, he realized things about that scene and he, he was writing the continuation. It was like, oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, I did that. And I did that. <laughs> so how long of a shoot was this? I, you know, it's funny is because the storm hit, I think we were originally scheduled for... I think we were originally scheduled 15 days, but we ended up getting 17 because we had about five or six days where we just couldn't shoot couldn't anything shoot like we we were separated from some of our actors because they were at a cabin nearby and mm-hmm. we, we didn't you know, have, vehicles, we didn't have so the ability safe. to get to yeah them. um so yeah it was it was a nice i mean it, it, we we like to say we're we're cursed both good and bad um <laughs> that that winter storm gave us time to sort of like you know look take at a, footage take a moment and like be like well how are we going to do this how are we going to do that but so yeah, it, a fifteen day shoot turned into you know you get two days more, but it was a uh, it was a quick shoot either way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I dang. Um, how I guess uh, who found the location? Uh, whoever your location scout was, that was it was kind of an interesting story yeah. as far as how that location came about when we were putting together. Uh, our, our deck, essentially, our, our creative deck. Um, our editor, Dashiell, um, also a producer on the project, found that house online. Um, and, you know, we all kind of go, yeah, this would be the most ideal house. And so <laughs> Angela and I, um, we were in Texas and we drove out to it. I was like, oh, I think I, know where, I think I know where this is. <laughs> And so I, I basically sleuthed on this house uh, through tax rolls and things like that. Wow, I sound really... <laughs> really creepy. Yeah, just, somebody can make a horror movie about me now. Yeah, uh, yeah, trying to get this house. Uh, but that's how it came about. And it, like, it is like a, a testament to persistence in independent filmmaking, um, where I just kept mm-hmm. you know, doing my, uh, you know, running every trap that I could in order to find the, the homeowner. And... Uh, and then convince the homeowner that you know, they needed to be a part of our movie. You know, uh, when it came to this or uh, for this film, it I enjoyed, you know, the horror elements. Um, also, it felt at times some of the camp elements. And I again, I can't stress enough that it just seems like you all had a blast making this. And so I'd like to know just what was one of your favorite um, scenes that not spoiling anything to do. Wow, it's tough. That is tough. I mean, I'm probably going to be biased toward the first day, honestly. And we were just like, a lot of us had worked together before, but not all of us. So we were getting to still know, you know, some of us still know each other, but it was like, it couldn't be a more beautiful day. And it was, we were doing the scene where everyone arrives. We've got this like beautiful classic car. Everyone except for Freddie is working that day. Um, and it was kind of like the first time we were like getting into our characters and, and playing around. Um, and it was before the storm hit. <laughs> so it was a, 
it was, it was really fun. And then, and then I would probably pair that with then toward the end of the shoot after the storm had passed. And because we quarantined all together on set, we had hit the number of days and number of testing where we could be a little bit more, you know, a little bit more relaxed Mm -hmm. and actually hang out a little bit more as, as people. And we all like laid on the grass in the sun and, it just was like kind yeah. of a full circle. Some of the people took paddle paddle boards and canoes out into the water. It was a nice day. Um, nice. I think, yeah, I think for me, one of the, I mean, it was near the end, I think, because I was like, oh, sigh of relief. Um, but I do remember wrapping uh, Emma. Uh, mm-hmm. Like we had shot her, all her scenes, and we had wrapped her. And uh, I remember going back to her and be like, Emma, I have a, I have a couple ideas for couple things if you wanted to shoot them and she had stayed up all night celebrating the fact that she had wrapped and it's like (laughs) six in the morning and mark's knocking on her door she's like fine mark (laughs) (laughs) but i will say the stuff that we shot with her that day we use quite i mean we use it a lot yeah Uh, so it was i I felt really good about using it yeah especially since i made her get up so early yeah (laughs) When it came to um, putting this project together, like how did everything come about with uh, just, you know, being attached to the project, getting the other cast members and just um, putting it all together? Primarily just work. I mean, I say this, we worked with mostly friends um, and in some of the casting, there were a couple friends of ours that we had originally attached that couldn't, couldn't do it for various reasons. And we had to reach out to friends of theirs um or friends to friends um so for instance sal um who joe uh, (laughs) is amazing actor and uh he comes from a friend um, who was also on the mayans Mm -hmm. that's how we got into touch with sal um and then quentin uh q uh, our our lead uh our our uh, previous friend, uh, sorry, he's our current friend, our previous lead <laughs> had to drop out because he, uh, he had got a directing gig at Juilliard. And we're like, ah, oh, Juilliard. Yeah. But I, I called a friend of mine who is the associate director uh, with Hamilton. And I asked him, hey, you have anybody who would fit this role? And he's like, sent me a, a couple of people and they were both wildly talented. Um, and Q is from the area as well. And he graciously agreed to do the project. Um, but yeah, it, it was all like, uh, it was a really tight knit group. Uh, a lot of people had worked together before yeah. Emma, we, we both knew Emma. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it was, it was pre vaccine COVID and, you know, it was such a, not that it's not still a turbulent time, but it was, sure. there was so much unknown and anxiety and people were out of work and it was really a way that we could all, come together and, and do something as to not go crazy. So we, we wanted to keep the group really, really small and mostly people that we knew just because it was a pandemic and we just sure. wanted, you know, not to, to keep it small, to keep people safe and also have fun. And yeah. Did, um, did you ever find that COVID um, may have um, impacted or maybe changed some of the narrative um, during filming? Mm. In, not in terms of the story. story it definitely kept like we tried to keep as few characters as possible sure um and one of the reasons mark acts in the film he didn't necessarily he does a wonderful job I, yeah he doesn't he didn't really want to no. but we didn't want another body on set we wanted to keep the bodies as few as possible for as the lowest amount of risk and I, sure. I'm trained as an actor too. It's not like yeah, I, I yeah. don't know what I'm doing, but it's, it, it, I don't recommend it necessarily <laughs> uh, uh, to, to put on so many different hats, especially whenever you're, you know, winter storm and all that stuff included. Um, but yeah, I did. Uh, we, you know, we had, uh, you know, a couple of positions that we were hoping that we we're going to be able to help, like help out. But, you know, with COVID everything like that, we, we did, uh, have to sort of adjust on the fly in terms of the logistics and mm-hmm. sort of production itself. Scheduling. You know, scheduling. Like we, oh, yeah. you know, we didn't have a, you know, an AD for the entire shoot. We didn't have a line producer for the entire shoot. So um, a lot of these, these duties were essentially, you know, gifted to other departments, <laughs> uh, myself and Angela included, you know, where you're, 
you're oftentimes you're you're directing and then you're producing and you're acting and mm-hmm. you're producing and you're you know so um, it, in that sense it uh, COVID was constantly uh, in our thoughts mm-hmm. and you know affecting us that way just trying time in terms of trying to make the the best out of the production. I always found it interesting how um, you know during that time uh, films were still being made which. You know, I'm thankful for anybody who could still work during that time, because that definitely, I think, um, myself, like, I'm very fortunate to be able to work from home. Um, Mm -hmm. And so it it was, I'm very thankful to see that, especially with the arts, because I will say just in general, um, here in St. Louis, we lost so many spaces for performing arts. So it's nice to see that, um, you know, movies were still being made. And on top of that, I think, you know, for me, horror films or just genre films in general are kind of like my escape. So I'm always happy to see new films. Um, What was it like seeing your film on the big screen at Overlook? It was really exciting. I mean, we had only previously done um, a few friends and family showings locally, which, um, which were super fun. And you know, our, our parents, our aunts and uncles maybe aren't the horror community. Like this isn't maybe, the, you know, they, they loved it because we made it kind of a thing, but they're not people who are actively looking to watch horror movies. So it was really exciting to have an audience, the audience we made this for there mm-hmm. felt really special. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Um, you know, speaking of the Overlook, I am curious while you all were there, did you get any time to see any other films not as many as we had hoped to i got to see hypochondriac which i I loved yeah Um, madison's such a great director yeah he really made a wonderful story there as well and i know zach zach and i worked together in the past um and i've seen his work and i'm a big fan of his work and i've never seen him play a character like that um and i was really blown away um I, i loved yeah, we were big fans. Um, I also saw uh, Who Invited Them. Oh, and my, yes. I, I, I we remember, that was so funny. Yes. I was just like dying laughing the entire time. Um, and Ryan Hansen, who was like, I, I I remember just watching him on Party Down and stuff like that. I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is so great. The script was so <laughs> um, tense and funny and weird. Duncan's yeah. fantastic. Just yeah. like, I mean, like, I, um, we also saw Zalaba, which I, was really good ooh, and spooky. I That's uh, probably my type of movie. The, <laughs> slow, the slow burn of that all was just like, I was like, wow. And I'm thinking about it for a week later, like, <laughs> and like man, which one am I? <laughs> you know, so, but I unfortunately didn't get to see, I, I think those were the only three I got to see. I was dealing with a couple of technical issues, but. Um, so it, it, it kept me from seeing all the movies. I wish I could have seen them all. But we're keeping tabs on them when they yeah. become available. Uh, Cause it, you know, that's one of the fun things about festivals is getting to know the other filmmakers and hearing about their experiences. And so it was a really cool time. Yeah. I, you know, it, I, I'll be fully honest. That was my first in-person festival and it was really great to see all of the um, artists as well, um, just to interact, because I'll be honest, I was also nervous just to approach anybody and be like, I really enjoyed your film. Uh, but I, I really did. And I um, was also kudos to um, Q and Emma for singing as well. That was. They're I, brilliant. I mean, they so we shot I mean, that scene, it's a it's a the whole cast is in it. So it, it, it took a long time to shoot. Yeah. Um, and it had started sleeting. We were probably out there for four hours at least with, the, and just the smoke yeah. kept blowing in their faces just <laughs> as the wind I, would have it. There's a, there's a wonderful moment um, where the smoke just attacked Q. <sighs> and I think we cut to him like right afterwards. And it was like, he was clearly feeling the, the scene as well, but I'm like, oh, this smoke is making him cry. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> it, 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 like, but then but, to sing like that after smoke going into your instrument, I, I mean, I just couldn't believe well, that. He's, yeah. he's a Broadway musician. I mean, he had us in tears. I mean, and I'm not, that's not an exaggeration. We're all on set just going, man, this is such a, a beautiful moment to be around this campfire with this person who's just singing his heart and soul out to you. And yeah, we, we all looked at each other after that first, you know, the, the music, the singing that's in the movie, 
that's location sound. That's not piped in later. That is crazy. crazy. I know. Yeah. He's amazing. And also, Emma is a fantastic musician and, yeah. and, and singer as well. I mean, just give her a quick shout out. She wrote that song and she for the for the film. She wrote it for the film and she made a music video that's dropping or it, it, it just drops last yeah. week. Yeah. So it's like it's you, on gotta, YouTube. you gotta watch it. Yeah, uh, it's, it's so fun. It's so it's just uh, so, yeah. I mean, I already downloaded the song too. Like oh, when yay. I said, you guys, I'm a fan of the film. I, I love it. I love film. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think um, one of the other things I wanted to ask about too, because I couldn't remember as well, um, the paintings, because I thought those were yes. just beautiful. Yeah. Um, where, who, I guess, did you commission those from? And they were made specifically for the film? Uh, mm-hmm. A gentleman by the name of Gordon. Stotts, Stotts, S T O T C, I believe, um, is a friend of Dashiell's, um, and he's an artist. Like his work has been in Netflix shows, all all sorts of. We, we definitely didn't didn't think we were going to be fancy enough for you know he's got a <laughs> he's got a really a really great resume, but he was down to work with us on them. He liked the concept and the script. He made six paint, like, and these paintings are massive. Yeah. Um, so it was wonderful to get to work with him in the process too, because he, I mean, he's such an artist, and we we kind of gave him some some concepts early on, and to see him uh, work with those concepts at different stages um, and sort of show us different things it was really it was fascinating to see him work and how he went from one thing to the other. Well, I liked how that played throughout the movie. Um, At first I'm like, did I, did I just see that? I'm like, Oh, and as it, um, the story played on, I really enjoyed that element. Just kind of really added to it. Yeah. Yeah. He, I mean, it's such a, especially because, you know, we, with the the guidance of our, our production designer, like really, chose a very bare aesthetic in the house Mm -hmm. having those paintings be the focal point and like the most sort of the most color that you end up seeing it was it was being really cool i think yeah it was a fun sort of dive into that i think especially with this with our production design that we you were talking about with Mm -hmm. marie we it also played into some of freddie's character Mm -hmm. uh sorry that's dr frost's character yeah um (laughs) I'm like, Freddie, I just, yeah, he's such a great actor, Freddie. But, you know, in some of his attire, you know, we were talking about it being sort of almost like a a guru-y type thing. You know, you like, it's like shades of a Steve Jobs out there, but like in a- uh, Steve Jobs were like into wellness. Into wellness, yeah. (laughs) So seeing that part, and then you'll notice like in the film where most of it is bare, but there is a location that is not, that is Mm -hmm. overloaded. And it's a really fun reveal, in my opinion. I like the way, too, um, the way you did the shots as well. Just, it was, enjoyed that. Yay. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I I think then, uh, just with uh, last couple of questions, just in the past 365 days, I would have to ask, what was a great moment in horror to either of you? Could be a movie, could be a, a moment, um, a monster. I'm just curious. Wow, that's a that a is good really hard good question. question. I'm trying to think of all the the movies that we've watched over the past year. I will say, when you make a movie, you watch less. <laughs> I, I could <laughs> imagine, sad, but it's like you're like, I don't have time. <laughs> um, Yeah, I think, you know, it's funny to me is like, I really, I really, really enjoyed going to Overlook um, for Mm -hmm. that reason, because it was like, it, it allowed me the opportunity to sit down and watch multiple movies. And I think, I I think that was one of those things with Zalava, one of the reasons why I really liked it is because I was just sitting there and I think I've been going nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. And that, that movie sort of, uh, kind of forced you to sit there because it does move a little slower Mm -hmm. Uh, and it 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 sits you down and basically says hey do you uh how do you interact with these these things of horror how do you feel about them which one are you which which sort of uh character 
um, are you going to inhabit in this? Mm -hmm. um, so that was a, that was a really nice one for me. Um, walking out of that. Sorry. Go yeah, no, no, yeah, no, go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I had a hell of a great time uh, seeing X in the theater. Oh, it's one of so the few good. I've seen in the they're theater. So and I just, I, I just, I thought it balanced so many different things and the genre so well. Um, I just, the moment, and I well, try not to give something away, but there's a, almost like interpretive dance sequence mm -hmm. that was like my favorite part of the whole film. And I just, I just loved it so much. Can I change my answer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that was amazing. Movie. That was, that was a good one as well. I mean, this year has been, um phenomenal for horror What's, yeah. what What's are some yours? of yours yeah i'm curious you know everyone it's so um divisive but i loved malignant because i just thought it was batshit insane yeah i just yes. i pictured james wan being like i'm gonna make this movie you're gonna give me my money and i'm gonna <laughs> yeah. make what i want to make yes and i just yeah. like that and then um uh, VHS 94 because Hale Ratma became like this crazy sensation. Yeah. And I thought that was quite um, humorous. Yes. But I think with my final question then, um, just given the story of the summoned, uh, I mean, would you, if you had to, um, I guess in a sense, you know, sell your soul to the devil, mm. would you? <laughs> Who's to say we haven't already? Uh, uh, That's. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> uh, I mean, I. Well, I just, I'd really have to read the contract. Yeah, I was like, what are the terms? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I'd have to have my lawyer <laughs> take a look at it, yeah. you know. <laughs> I think we learned some don'ts from this film. You Very know? true. So we'd want yeah. to put some clauses in. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, it um, so. oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say thank you for taking the time out of your day to speak with me because again, I enjoyed the film. Um, it drops tomorrow and I, I truly can't wait to watch it again. Oh, um, yeah. and you guys did a stellar job and again, independent horror is just so good this year. So just Yay. congrats. Thank, you so, Thank you so much. It's so great to talk with you. And it, it really means a lot. And we really appreciate it. Yeah. We appreciate everybody out there listening too. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I will um, put all the links below and actually too, I mean, same thing as we'll be speaking with Emma um, this weekend as well. So oh, great. I, I tried to get as many people from the film, just like I said, uh, I just want to champion awesome. it. It was, it was just really fun really to watch. So, but Thank to, you. Everyone else, I'll just say thanks for listening and goodbye. Goodbye. You have been listening to the Horror Hour. See you next time.